Now, you may remember about two years ago, we had atheist Richard Dawkins on the factor. He is on a crusade to convince believers they're idiots. Well, now Mr. Dawkins has a new book partially aimed at children called The Magic of Reality. I talked to him earlier this week. Now, you wrote this book, and this book, you know, uh, is marketed somewhat toward children, adolescents, correct? Uh, it is. Yeah, and you yes. want them, you want them to not only believe in science, which I think is a good thing, but reject God and religion. No, this is a book about science. It doesn't talk about God. Uh, it mocks God. I looked no, at it. No, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, which, bit, which, bit of, which bit have you looked at? I mean, I went through that book. And you basically are saying that everything can be explained by science, correct? Uh, well, everything about the natural world can yes. be explained by science, but where does it mock God? It basically says that these things are myths, they're not really true. Every chapter has myths at the beginning of the chapter. Aha! Some of them are Aztec myths, they're ancient Egyptian myths, Greek Whatever. myths, Judeo Christian you know, myths. Don't play these semantic games with me. You know what you're doing. You're trying to get to the kids and say, hey, you're an idiot if you believe in God. I, I don't, it's nothing to do with God. I'm talking about myths from all over the world. The Judeo Christian myth is thrown in occasionally as one of many myths that come from around the world. The Judeo Christian philosophy isn't a myth, it's reality. This country was, was based on it. Well, that's not true. Yes, it um, is. Throughout history, some of the worst regimes ever have been atheistic. You know that? Communists under Stalin, Mao Zedong. Nothing to do with atheism. They, no, really? No. no. Uh, see, my, my uh, hypothesis is that religion is a constraint on society. Goodwill toward men, teach, uh, creating everybody uh, as Jesus taught, uh, the same as you, how you would like to be treated, the Ten Commandments. They're constraints against bad behavior. Which of the Ten Commandments do you do value? Uh, all Thou of shalt not make a graven image. Thou shalt not violate the Sabbath. Do you, do you, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt well, not bear Thou shalt not kill is, is a, a widespread belief all over the world. It's not by Pol Pot Potter, Mao Zedong, well, Joseph not. Stalin. They're, they're, they all had one thing in common. They didn't believe in God. But in any case, it's nothing to do with whether you believe in God or not. Um, you don't see it's a constraint? You don't see religion as being a constraint on human behavior? The bad Not part? really, no. no. Really? I mean, I think there's been evil. I'm not, I don't want to get into a shouting match about who's more evil than who. Are we shouting? What I do think is that there is a logical connection between believing in God and doing some, sometimes doing evil things. Sometimes, absolutely. Um, you see that in the holy war, the jihad. Yes, indeed. But there's no logical connection between being atheist and doing evil things. It's just incidentally true that, say, Mao Zedong and Joseph Stalin happened to be atheists. But that wasn't what drove them. What drove them was a political ideology that had nothing to do with, ade well, with atheism. I, but again, I come back to the constraining influence of a religion. Uh, that it does discourage this kind of behavior, because we'll go back to the thou shalt not kill commandment. Now, the last time we were here, you were honest enough, you were here, you were honest enough to admit you don't know the origin, whether it was a meteor or something like that. And you said to me, we're working on it, and I said to you, when you get it, let me know. That's how we left it last time. That was only about two years ago. And still, you don't know. Well, are you talking about the origin of life? I'm talking about the origin of existence, of human existence and plant existence and animal existence. How can it possibly help to postulate a divine intelligence to explain something complicated like that? Here's how it can help. If you believe in the teachings of Jesus or Buddha or someone like that who wants people to be peaceful and to love each other. That is a good thing. Yeah, but what's that got to do with the origin of the moon? Because I don't believe a meteor crashed into the earth and made everything happen. I think intelligent design made everything happen. Give it a last word. Well, I mean, science does know quite a lot about things like how the moon came into existence, why the sun is there, um, why the galaxy is there. Science doesn't yet know how everything started, and as I said last time, they're working on it. All right. Okay, we appreciate you coming and taking the fire, Mr. Dawkins. The book is The Magic of Reality. Thank you.